Hi everyone and welcome. It is Friday the 1st of May 2020 and um, my name is Marina Conway Gordon. I'm here from the real life of brands which is a space where we talk about real stories from behind brands and businesses. I'm here today with Claire Norwood, um, property developer and investor and also Helen Chorley investor as well. So we have a particular story to talk about today um, to do with investment, JVing and mentoring. Claire, why don't you take it away and tell us, tell us the story. Uh, well, well, this is a story that Helen knows very well. Um, she's been brilliant throughout the whole thing and has given me so much support and learning that, you know, looking back, I would have done things so differently. But the story is basically about me being quite new to property and having a bit of money in my pocket, not, not a lot, but um, you know enough to be wanting to be quite keen to do something with it and to get it working. And I found somebody who was going to mentor me and he came with a great story, backstory, you know, he was clearly an experienced developer with a lot of experience and it all seemed to add up and you know I absolutely really I just thought he was great and we started working together mentoring but very quickly it turned into him saying look you know you know far more than you think Claire let's be business partners I think by that time he kind of sniffed the fact that I had some money and I just didn't really get that at the time um, he was working on a project with some other investors and he he kept saying that he wanted to find a way for me to get inv involved in this project financially because I was doing so much work on it anyway to support them. He was like, look, let's get your money working as well. So he basically offered to take a loan from me, which was ostensibly to be invested in this project. It turned out, I think he just used it for his own personal uses, but the way he was going to pay me back was from what he said was going to be the huge profits that this project was going to make. Like mm. the profits were huge, according to his spreadsheet, which, you know, I now realize you can put any numbers into a spreadsheet and make a deal stack up, you know, and I, this is the embarrassing bit. I went on podcasts at the time, you know, saying this, you know, that this guy is amazing. You know, he can make deals stack up where others have failed Oh, you know, and I just, I just believed him. And it's only as this project has kind of gone along that obviously the costs have been more than double what he forecast. Mm. The GDV hasn't even been realised yet because there's only two out of 10 apartments sold. The main investors have had to put in so much extra equity that, you know, it, it's a long story. He will not make any profit. I will not get my money back. And I, my, my paperwork, I handed over the money before there was any paperwork in place. As soon as he'd got the money, he wasn't interested in any legal. So I then spent a year working with lawyers to sort of work retrospectively to, to get everything written down. He mm. wasn't that bothered about cooperating. He did, but you know, we eventually, I paid 3000 pounds, got it all written up. But I thought that bit of paper gave me the, that was my security. What I now realize is it's, you know, that, that agreement was not worth the paper it was written on. And, you know, I've learned from Helen that there is, asset backed security and you know there were all sorts of things I could have asked for at the time I had no idea I just trusted him mm -hmm. um I don't think I'm gonna get the money back it's you know I've, I've felt shamed and embarrassed about it for a long time it's it's affected my marriage um you know we've got over it and he's he's sort of forgiven me but you know we've had to get to the stage where we've just gone look this money's not coming back you know, Claire was naive and, you know, but that's the worst I think I can be accused of. <laughs> that's how I'm trying, you know, and I've learned so much from it. Mm, absolutely. And um, I, I think it's interesting because, you know, we're in a, a time when people recommend having a mentor, you know, they're saying it's great to have someone with you who's trodden a path before. Um, yeah. And there are mentors around who want to, you know, 
as they say, sort of give back or, or get involved. And some, sometimes there is a partnership there um, and it can be successful. But I think, um, and I'm going to be asking Helen now, like I think especially in property, there seems to be um, this situation where there are mentors perhaps with not so much experience or um, don't really have the financial acumen to make those projects work and then they take on you know the uh, these sort of relative novices Helen what would you what would you say about that mm. um, I, I certainly agree with the mentors and you know kind of being fair to, to the whole of the property world there are fabulous mentors out there there are also a lot of not fabulous mentors out there and, and and that's really the key like what questions should we be asking what are the alarm bells I mean no paperwork is is like is the fundamental one for me and maybe some people can operate like that but it doesn't work for me and, and I personally would I wouldn't recommend that um, and, and when we say you know, paperwork sorry just about it when we say paperwork um yeah what kind of extent of of paper, paperwork I, I think I'd probably see myself a bit like Claire where I'd sort of be like you know a, an agreement of sorts but yeah what are we really talking about here well I think Claire's deal at the time was a loan so the, the minimum there should be really and you know we've not even got onto security but the minimum there should be is a loan agreement and it's a legal document um <laughs> It gives you some protection and it gives you some recourse to the money. Is it fail proof? No, it's not. And we're seeing that time and time again, especially at the moment. Um, I'm also having, you know, and kind of why I'm on here is because I'm, this is not just Claire. I wish you, I wish in some ways it was, but I'm having these conversations daily. People don't necessarily particularly at the beginning don't know what to ask don't know what to expect exactly what does paperwork mean and they are very often kind of guided by the mentor or by the guru or by the expert because they know what they're doing right mm. yeah they do but make sure somebody you know is after a win-win here um and you know that that's a that's a big tip for me um the, a lot of these people are excellent salespeople so they do draw people in you know if, if part of their job is sales then again that's where I would take a big pinch of salt with well they're a good salesperson so you know mm -hmm. kind of have a little more I don't know cynicism there's a, clearly a better word than that but around kind of what what they tell you if they're telling you something where they're incentives for incentivize for it to be correct just going to be a little bit cautious around that mm. and Claire you were saying that um you know it, it actually turned out um fairly quickly it seems that that you know you actually had uh, a lot more experience than you know than would have perhaps you thought initially and um and then they thought and so they sort of cottoned on to that I mean, that must be challenging as well, because you sort of think, well, we could be at any stage in our, you know, in our career in something. And yeah, at what point do we kind of go, OK, this person definitely knows more than me? I mean, if we're looking at, say, um, an advertised mentor, which I know that they have this in property quite a bit more, it's, um, you know, it's very public and that, that, that that's possible. What kind of things would we be looking at? you know, on a web page even or something, what kind of details? What, what, or what would, what, would, what would ring alarm bells, do you think? I, I think for me, one of the alarm bells I've, I've seen is when people want a lot of money up front. Mm. It, it kind of suggests cash hungriness. And what I've discovered through talking to other people in my situation is that as soon as the mentor, mentor, gets that money you know that they, they very quickly lose interest in actually delivering the value and even then when you know even when there's paperwork in place about what the mentor will deliver in terms of value it's, it's very subjective so it, you know it can always be argued oh so what what to ask for I, I think I think you've got to talk to lots of people and that's something I've learned from Helen you know don't just don't just certainly listen to what the mentor themselves is saying but talk to your wider network and in my case this guy had been living abroad so there weren't that many people to speak to I don't know if I would have done at the time anyway but anyone now I'd say don't talk to just the people that they suggest but you know throw your net wide 
ask in the wider community and also go online and, and look. You know, if I'd done some digging, I would have discovered things that were actually quite easy to discover about him that would have absolutely confirmed and you know this is the other thing I had a gut feeling at the time I chose to ignore it and I I think that's a really good point that Claire makes though when we come into this and we're new and we think we don't know anything we still have kind of common sense and a good good you know feeling about things and very often these people are put on pedestals and very often those pedestals are self-made when you start digging mm. um, you know, and I've heard about people, you know, that they can recommend kind of five or ten of their mentees that you go and speak to. Go and speak to every one of them. And then keep asking. There's so many resources, you know, again, about internet. Look on Companies House. Does this person and this company have the assets that they say what they will do? I pretty much apply kind of the due diligence that I do when I look in at a deal, like a property deal and investment, as I do to, to the people, to the person, to, to a mentor. I even know, you know, I've heard of people that kind of, you know, and maybe you do need a big investment with this, but I've hired kind of um, private investigators to go and kind of check out people and see if they really are who they say they are. Mm -hmm. And when there's significant money at stake, then those things are, are kind of a false economy not to do. It's so true, Helen, because you, it's not just the cost of the mentor, it's the cost of any deals your mentor guides you into. And mm. this is the other thing that Helen and I have, have connected with people who, well, I'm, I'm one of them. You know, part of my story is that I, I did a deal on with my mentor because he deemed it, you know, a good deal. And I lost a load of money on that as well. I'm not the only one. You know, but you believe because they're there to guide you, to show you what the figures are. So, you know, it is so worth spending some money up front. It is an investment. It, you would do due diligence on a crowd, you know, crowdfunded deal or any big monetary investment you make. Why not do the same with a mentor? And that's it. People kind of like, oh, shy away from spending, I don't know, two or three hundred pounds or whatever, you know, a good solicitor is going to cost to review a loan agreement that probably the mentor or the guru has, they, that they've written and it's just probably stacked in their favour if they're, if they're unscrupulous, clearly not if they're one of the good ones. That £300 is probably the best investment you could make if you're going to put more than £300 at stake because you pay now or you pay later and trying to unravel that, you know, as Claire, Claire, you know, she had a big bill to try and get a legal document in place retrospectively. And let's just quickly talk about um, social media because you both just use the word guru quite a lot. And um, I think this can be applied in a few industries, but you know, there's, uh, I think we all know that there's some guruism tactics um, through social media a lot. Um, and especially in places in uh, where people are in positions to help others, um, there can be incredible marketing campaigns that can incite that trust into them um you know in really incredible um marketing campaigns and you come to the point where you sort of think they're a marketing company rather than a, a property expert or a or a life coach or whatever it is um yeah what do we what should we look out for when it comes to social media because that's where we're spending most of our time now run <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I, I did an article for um, Property Investor News magazine, the lovely Richard Bowser interviewed me earlier this year. And I, this is kind of more on the kind of the deal side of things, but where somebody's so kind of concerned about kind of their image and, you know, yes, I'm, you know, I'm with you on brand, but, but build a, a real brand. That's why I love what you do. But when they're more focused on, on the image, the brand, their public perception, where where is their attention their energy going it, it's not in the deal and you know i kind of feel like that about mentorship as well mm. i think that's interesting because i think it's quite well documented that mentors tend to spring up where there's a need for cash flow so they've thought okay what can i while this project is is happening not happening stalling or or it's just going along you know i'll do this other thing because there's these kind of cash uh, voids aren't there in property sometimes when you you've lent this and now you're waiting for things to come back in and um, I guess that can yeah lead to people being um, yeah in these mentor positions when perhaps they're not really yeah they don't have the 
the experience really to be passing on. Um, and that seems like a good time probably for others as well to go, oh, well, I'll just do some learning while I'm, you know, we all yeah. want to be. You, you know, know it's, it's a fine balance, as you said, Maureen, you know, this is part of the world that we operate in nowadays. You know, I've got into it, you know, I'm trying to get more passive than, than less passive. That's not quite kind of how it's working out for me, unfortunately, because I feel so passionately about people out there and they're with about those smoke and mirrors um you know and the balance you know we've got lots of kind of like in the property system there's lots of wonderful women doing amazing things who are kind of the good ones and they do mentorship and they run successful development so there is that balance but claire hit the nail on the head it's about the value that they're giving they're showing you what they can do they're showing they'll be honest about the mistakes that they've made um you know rather than oh it's all about me <laughs> yes i'm i'm more out there now it's not about me it's about the message it's like if i can help you give qu what questions should you be asking what legal documents should you have in place how do you structure these things what are the warning bells mm -hmm. it's about the message it's not about me and it's, it's not about claire yeah. and, and i just yeah picking up on that helen I, there really are some good mentors out there but i think what marks them out for me is when they'll say listen we don't know everything you know, we're maybe a little bit further down the line than you and, and we'll share what we know with you. We're not gurus, do not treat us as such. And maybe they'll have a sort of, you know, you pay them per month and it just feels sort of congruent. It's just this big need for money up front and the big promises. You know, it's, it's like investment. You know, Helen looks for developers who will be honest about the pitfalls and the and potential problems rather than this is going to be brilliant you'll make loads of money you want the same with the mentor mm. and, and there are some really good ones out there and I, I do want to say that just because we're talking about my bad experience doesn't mean to say that people shouldn't have mentors I'd love a great one myself but you know it's just to alert people to how easy it can be to just lose money in this business mm. Absolutely. I'm really kind of hearing, getting to know, getting to know them, not just from their profile and what comes up on Google and, and a bit of due diligence, but actually, you know, that thing that are, are our values aligned. Um, absolutely. And probably observing just their attitude and the voice of, of what they're saying, I imagine, as well online and how they describe things. I think, you know, we can... We, we sort of all know really that like when we hear that like oh big sum of money that probably somewhere inside of all of us we go oh I should probably check that out um but somehow it can you know when you see a few like you said Claire a few stacked spreadsheets and some other things that seem to make sense it makes it all the more real and um I imagine for some people that would be like okay well I guess maybe that is possible you know yeah. I uh so uh, absolutely hearing hearing you on that um I think, and also going back to what, I can't remember who was saying this, but it, it's, it's, yes, listen to what people say, but more than that, watch what they do. And that's why you shouldn't jump into bed with anyone immediately. You know, you need time to observe them in action and words are cheap. This is what I discovered, you know, the, the business partner I've now ended up with who actually came through this mentoring experience. So something good comes from everything, but I was watching him during this time and you know, he, he does what he says he's going to do. He follows up on his emails. He's, he's dependable. He's reliable. He gets down and does the work. Whereas the other guy just talked a big talk. And, you know, as soon as things got a bit messy and actually all, all projects are messy and boring and daily grind, he wasn't interested. So, mm -hmm. you know, take your time and observe and watch them operate and it's not about what they say because my guy told me first thing he told me oh i'm, I'm so ethical just so you know i'm really ethical <laughs> thank you so much for your invaluable advice um i would suggest probably following both of you for for this journey that that's unraveling at the moment um you're both on instagram helen what's your what's your tag helen jane 888 and claire Mine is Claire L for Louise Norwood. Brilliant, because that's where a lot more is of this discussion is taking place at the moment. Um, that'd be super useful for people and possibly a YouTube channel soon. So um, thank you both very much and um, we'll talk to you again soon.